Can you hear me, Terrell? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, can you see me okay? Uh, not yet. See your logo. Okay, let's see what's going on. Oh, it says start video. Got it. Yeah. Turn mine's uh, on. Okay, yeah. great. How are you doing uh, today? Good, good. Thank awesome. you for joining me. I appreciate well, it. Well, absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate that as well. Hope you see my yeah. cat there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like your okay. background. That's Thank dope. You. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yes. So you play uh, basketball, huh? Yeah, yeah. I played pro ball. I played uh played at George Mason, and uh -huh. um, I'm from Bowie, Maryland. So uh, yeah, I've been playing all my life. <laughs> is, is that right? So who are you playing for again? Are you playing overseas? Yeah. So I play in Australia. Um, gotcha. Last year, before, you know, COVID hit, so I'm planning to go back. I'm going to uh -huh. the DR in July. Is that right? Yeah. So that's awesome. exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I appreciate that. So uh, what's your position? Point guard. Point guard? Yeah. How many points should be averaging? Um, averaging 24. 24. How many, oh, that's nice. How about how about assists? <laughs> averaging four. Well, I know I, I didn't get that up. I didn't get that up. Okay. Yeah, well, you gotta get that up. But I mean, you're good with the points, but you know, you're the point guard, so you should be like really in your triples. You should be in triples. <laughs> points, rebounds. Well, let's put let's just put doubles. We can go for doubles. Right, right, yeah. Assists yeah. and points. That's I gotta pretty be fair. like Russell Westbrook. I gotta get yeah. up there. Yeah, definitely, without a doubt. No, I definitely want to talk to you, um, cause you, I saw you played in Luxembourg, so I played for Wofford Donch. So, oh yeah, yeah, that was pretty cool. Small world, huh? Right, right. And yeah. how'd y'all do? Uh, we finished like, we finished like fifth place. Uh huh. So we didn't like win the cup or anything, but uh, we were like competitive before you know that drop top bottom playoff. So we were always like right there. Right. What year did you uh, play? So I played in 2017 to 2019. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh, so I'm, I'm sure the competition. How, how was the competition over there? Uh, it was solid. It was solid. So like the Americans were always really good, you know. Always. So that's, that's really just what it was. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're the best athletes on the planet. Right. Americans. Right. Yeah. You know, why do you think that is? I'm kind of curious. What is it? about us American athletes that we are the best on the planet? You know, I, I really don't know. I, I mean, we get a little deep with it. It probably goes back to our history. You know, <laughs> it's just like that grit, um, that right. grind. Uh, we've always just, that American dream, really, it's never been easy for us. We, I mean, we don't make it easy for us, so we just, I don't know. You know, you know what I don't understand? How is that we can live in America mm -hmm. and not make six figures? And someone else can come here to America and make six figures in the first year. How is that? Yeah, that's a good point. My Jewish friend did it. My African friends have done it. You know, my Mexican friends. I've seen. I've witnessed it myself. Yeah. You know, and it's like a hundred thousand is nothing. Yeah, yeah. You dig? Yeah, I feel you. It's crazy. It's my. I think it's well, mindset. But let me know when you're ready. Yeah. So it's almost eight o'clock. So what I'm okay. gonna do is I'm gonna introduce it. And gotcha. um, then we're going to go right into it. Okay. Cool. All right, cool. All right, so I'm Taylor Brown, and this is how I did it. The show where we talk with champions about how they achieve their dreams. On today's show, we're talking with Frida Gibbs. Frida Gibbs is a former professional martial artist, kickboxer, and boxer. She's won many world titles, such as three world titles in Taekwondo, was All-American in basketball and track. Known as the most dangerous woman in the world, Frida, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Taylor Brown, thank you very much for having me. And actually, they call me Fridia. Fridia. Fridia, yeah, but My it's apologies. all good. My yeah, apologies. it's all good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I see you did your homework there, huh? Yeah, you know, I had to. Coach Dale, Coach Dale told me about you. I was like, all right. What did coach say? No, oh, he was like, you got a story. He was like, you got a story, got to talk to you. So I'm, I feel honored, you know, giving me your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, we all have a story, Taylor, yeah. you know, and, and yours is just beginning. So it's going to be sweet. It's all about how you how you want it to end. You dig? I feel that. But well, either way, just make sure you end with your hands raised. Fair enough. Fair. OK. Fair. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Fridia. So you're the first black African-American um, woman to win a world kickboxing championship. How does that feel? 
How does that feel? That's a very good question. Um, when I won it, I can only tell you how it felt when I, when I first won. It was a feeling that I can't describe. Mm. And it was so, it was such an high, you know what I mean? That uh, I'm still on it. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. So to be the first, I mean, it was incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Definitely. Definitely. Shock in the world. It was incredible shock in the world. I can only imagine. <laughs> I can only imagine. I watch your um your production, your your documentary, your uh-huh. uh, nine minute documentary. That was awesome. Well produced. Uh Thank I you. like the way it was shot, uh the actors. Mm-hmm. And um, just just watching that, you say you grew up in Chester, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And um, you say you didn't realize that you, you got you were poor, but you 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 your family were happily poor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you credit your upbringing for your your kickboxing career, your boxing career? Just you know, one thing that comes to mind is the movie Creed and how right. you know that's that was a grind. You know, it's kind of like you start off poor and you work your way up to success. So right. do you credit your upbringing for that? Absolutely. You know, my upbringing is like hiking the mountain, hiking mm-hmm. from the bottom to the mountain to the top. And by that, I mean, you know, at the bottom of the mountain, you got a whole, you, everybody's at the bottom, you dig? And, mm-hmm. and each time you take a step out, those mountains getting closer and closer to the top, it gets tougher and tougher and only the strong survives. And there is a true saying that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's lonely at the top. I wouldn't say it's lonely at the top, but there's very few at the top. And, and that's a very true saying. And those at the top, they're very special. Um, humble beginnings, very humble beginnings. Yeah. So no, we didn't know we were poor. You know, only thing I knew was that we had a lot of love. Yeah. You dig? It was a lot of love and there was a lot of, there was a lot of black love. There was a lot of black support. And there was yeah. a lot of family support. That's the only thing that I knew. And that's the only thing that I saw. You dig? When we came, when my mom, we came in, we got hugs and kisses. You yeah. from school. You follow what I'm saying? When my dad came home, he got he got his hugs and kisses. Uh, every payday Friday, he they was playing Al Green, you know what I mean, and hugging and embracing each other. And we we I witnessed a lot of affection and love. Okay. Am I making sense to you? So yeah. that's what I witnessed, and that's what we had. We had love, you know. And I'm so happy because I have friends today who are very very wealthy, yeah. and what I do not see and what I have not seen, I had to bring it to their attention. Yes, you got all this materialistic gain. But what I've observed is that you guys lack a lot of love. Mm. I have been around you for three years and not once have I seen you embrace not one of your sons or daughters. Not once have I seen you hug your husband. Not one time within three years. That's the difference. We may have been poor, you know what I mean? But we had a lot of love in our situation. We may not have had that materialistic stuff, but there was a lot of love. You know, so I had to bring that and bring that to my my uh, colleagues attention even today. Like, you know, y'all missing love, baby. (laughs) You know, money can't buy love. But anyway, I hope I didn't get off that topic. (laughs) No, that was perfect. That was that was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I I definitely um, can can relate to that. Uh, You really can't be successful without having that love and support uh, for sure. So, yeah, absolutely. People know you, um, you know, as this world famous champion kickboxing. But let's talk about your basketball career. Um, <laughs> you played best kept secret. Yeah, you played internationally, uh, Eurobasket, Luxembourg. I know we just talked about it, but uh, you played mm-hmm. for Zella, who was a pretty successful program out there. Um, just yeah, talk about the your program career. around. I turned their entire. Let me share this with you, okay? Yeah. And and I, I hope one day that I have the opportunity to share this with him. I hope it's Zell, the president, sees this video. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Back yeah. there, I, I was at the top of my game. I was the number one Division One player in Pennsylvania in basketball and track. I'm the only female athlete and male athlete to ever receive a Division One double scholarship. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And that was the Temple University. So that was awesome. I flunked out of Temple. I never told anybody this here. Okay. But I, flunk, I flunked out of Temple. Within the first six months, I flunked out because I met this guy named Jermaine. And it was a wrap. <laughs> Only thing we did was went to practice. And I went. it was late at practice. I never went to class. I fell head over heels for him. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So I flunked out of Temple within the first six months. And Cabrini College, the, the coach, he had learned that I had flunked out of Temple. 
So he actually reached out to my grandparents, you know, because everybody knew who my grandparents were, yeah. uh, you know, they were pretty respected citizens. So he went down to my grandmother's and told my grandmother that he wanted to reach out to me, try to help me out. So uh, the bottom line is my basketball career. So that's what happened. That's how I flunked out of Temple, got to Cabrini College. So okay. Mike Tanagli, what he had done, he had reached out to me. He said, listen, I know that there's no way that I can get an athlete of your caliber. He said, but what I do know is that I can get you a very good education. He said, and at Cabrini, we can do that. He said, now the trade-off would be you get share your talents with us and I will ensure that you get a good education. And that was my goal, ultimately, Taylor Brown, mm -hmm. is a good education because I flunked out the first time. That was the first time I ever flunked. Yeah. That was the first time I ever lost. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and I lost because I was distracted because I fell in love with this dude named Jermaine. You know, <laughs> just being honest. Yeah. <laughs> that was love. Right. Class who didn't know any of my, didn't even go to class. But um, so I got, to, I, I uh, Mike and I, we talked and he, and I had a choice. So what I had done, I walked around in Chester in, in my hometown, mm -hmm. the first city in Pennsylvania, that's yeah. Chester. Okay. Loaded with about four or five projects, you dig? Mm -hmm. And I walked around. After I flunked out, I walked around, you know, and I thought to myself, this isn't what I want. I don't want to come back to this. Mm -hmm. I, I made a mistake. I, I, real, I didn't even realize I made a mistake. I, you know, just fell in love. You know, I just yeah. made a mistake, you dig? Yeah. yeah. And I walked around. I was looking at everybody, you know, after having gone to Temple for six months, mm -hmm. been there. And coming back and seeing everybody doing the same thing, shooting dice, playing basketball, stealing, robbing, shooting somebody, killing folks, whatever. Just all kinds of stuff that happens in the projects. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, dog chasing people, trying to bite them and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sneakers up on the damn a wire there. Uh, you know yeah. how it is. You follow what I'm saying? You know, we yeah. figure it out. <laughs> And I saw all that and I said to myself, you know what, this is not what I want. Mm -hmm. I asked Mike, I said, well, let me take a look at, uh, let me check out the campus. You dig? So mm -hmm. we went ahead and checked out the campus and I walked, as soon as I fell, walked on the, the campus of Cabrini University, I fell in love. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I hadn't even hit the gym, I, but as soon as I walked on the campus, I fell immediately in love and I knew it, we, there was this immediate connection Mm. So I told him, yeah, we'll do it. He showed me the court and everything. I was like, man, my high school basketball gym looked better than this shit, man. Excuse my French, but I had to keep it real. Right. He was like, well, look, this is division three. You dig? We're not yeah. division one, you know, and this is division three. Yeah. And when I had gone there, there weren't many African Americans. There was probably a handful and we were all on the basketball team. Right, right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So when I first got there, anyway, to make a long story short, Turn Cabrini College's basketball program completely around. Today, the three years that I was there, uh, I averaged, what, about 2,300 points within three years. Wow. So I'm leading it in points. I'm leading in rebounds. I'm leading in assists. I'm leading everywhere. In fact, Coach Zeke, uh, the athletic director who used to be there, and uh, the president, they just inducted me into the Hall of Fame okay. last, last year. Wow, congrats. And... They said that uh, I was the best athlete to ever put on a uniform in the 63 years that Cabrini University has been in existence. Wow. And that's a great athlete. That's a great accomplishment, huh? It that's was awesome. Just, it was a challenge being a Division One player, playing with Division Three players. But what I did, I used their strengths. Rather than use their weaknesses, Taylor Brown, I mm -hmm. utilized their strengths to my advantage. I, I use their strengths to my strength. That makes sense? Yeah. You know what I mean? I didn't focus on their weaknesses. I focused on their strengths. Right. If I knew that Sue was stronger making a, 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 me passing the ball to her a certain way so that she, and she's on the left minute so she can make that lay, left layup, I'm going to do it as opposed to passing it to such and such when I know that she ain't, she's not even confident with making, she can't even make that layup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just saying, for example. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want to become loquacious, but. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, no, that totally makes sense. Especially, you know, that probably helped you overseas, 
you know? Just yeah. Like, oh my God. I got to tell you. So how I got overseas, coach Zeke, he got me this, I received an invitation from the uh, European coaches. They were looking for Americans, you know, back in 1988. That's when I, I first went, I was there mm-hmm. from 1988 to 1990. Okay. And, uh, they had invited us to the Olympic Training Center, Center, in, Center in Colorado Springs. Did you go there? I did not. I did not go there. Okay, yeah. So we were at Colorado Springs, the Olympic Training Center. Okay. We had our own rooms and everything. We were training hard. I mean, Americans from all around, top okay. American athletes, all the European coaches were there, everything. We were there training. And it was pretty intense. And, uh, you know, I got the job. You you did got yeah. in a couple of fights, you know, but hey, <laughs> I had you know, when somebody when you're going for a layup and somebody comes up and just automatically win, windmills you, bam, you can't you you gotta you gotta let them know, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely. <laughs> gotta protect yourself. Yeah. But uh yeah, I went to now let me share this with you in regards yeah. to Luxembourg. I turned the whole program around. The first time in the history of Luxembourg they ever gone to a championship. Freedia Gibbs took them to that championship. Do you understand me? Yeah. I Freedia Gibbs turned their entire program around. When everyone heard about Freedia Gibbs over there sees and how Luxembourg went from 25 and 0 to 25, 25, no, no, from from 0 to 25, that was their record. Zero wins and 45. And then when Freedy and Gibbs got there, they were 45 and zero. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah. First time ever in the history. Okay. Now, um, you know, uh, the great thing is, you know, I turned their program around. And what really, what I, I'm just glad that I did. I, you know, I was, you know, high score, rebound, and turned their program around. People heard about Freedy Gibbs, all the different ages. So they were bringing other players over so they could play with me. You dig? Yeah. So that our team could get stronger and stronger and stronger. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And then once I realized that we kept, you know, getting closer and closer to the championship and finally we got to the close to the championship, but we lost, I knew that it was time for me to go because, you know, I had wanted to do other things. Mm. But this team was strong enough and they were bringing more and more people in where they would ultimately win, start winning those cups. That makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. That makes sense, sense to you? Yeah, for so sure. So it was fun because I, once I saw Sensei Benny on, uh, on television overseas there, Taylor Brown, when I saw him, I was like, oh, that's it. Got to go. <laughs> when his contract's over, I'm out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I went straight, packed everything and went straight, knocked on his door. Mm. You did. But I did have a great time over there. What I witnessed is the Berlin Wall being knocked down. Ooh, okay. And I'm tell you something. I didn't know. I knew that I was witnessing and feeling history. But I didn't quite understand because Americans, I, we weren't, I, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't taught about the Berlin Wall, the history of the Berlin Wall in America. Right, you follow right, what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, and all the basketball teams and everybody, they were running all, all out like the Berlin Wall, get a piece of the Berlin Wall, get a piece of the Berlin Wall. But they were speaking in German, you know, and I knew it had to have been something. I knew I was in the midst of a historic event because I was watching all these old people speak their language in canes and they're walking over with their cane and they're hitting this wall and they're doing it with such emotion and passion and feeling and like, you know, and like pain and anger. And I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm, I'm just feeling this anger. I mean, I mean, right. this energy, this vibration. I'm like, I am witnessing something and I'm in the midst of something historic, but I don't understand, Yeah, you know, but I, wow. I know that I am, but I feel it. You know, and I was witnessing it. It was unbelievable, you know, and I had taken a few pieces of the wall. Nice. You know, the Berlin Wall, I did, you know, because everyone, the basketball team was taking some. I was like, oh, you know, I ain't take care of no goddamn rock. You know, right. they were like, no, Jesus, <laughs> it's the wall, it's the wall. Yeah. So I had grabbed a few pieces. But uh, great experience. Tell me about your experience there. Man, well, I, I've been to Berlin, but I wasn't there during that time. Right. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah, I know you weren't. <laughs> no, but the one thing I love about Luxembourg was just the fact I could travel easily to the different countries. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it, it was different compared to other other countries, like just yeah. being in Australia and stuff. Um, the practice low was a little lighter. Um, yeah. We didn't do two a day, so stuff like that. And we played once on the weekend. So I loved the lifestyle. And to be honest, it was perfect. Um, and um, awesome. it was just fun. It was just awesome. fun. Awesome. Yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, it was a great experience for me. But I, I'm going to be honest, and this is what I would have shared with those guys. What I had done, and it was a great experience for me as well, because I had this bad suite up on the 12th floor. It was dope. Yeah, I was living really, really freaking like a champ, a world <laughs> champ. You follow what I'm saying? Yep. Believe me when I tell you, I was living like a champ and king of Prussia when I got this opportunity. <laughs> and I really wanted to play pro ball. So right. I had get, what I had done is given up my place and packed everything. Okay. I accept the offer and packed everything and then went over there and I wasn't satisfied. I mm. felt like I had come down mm. as far as in my quality and style, lifestyle of life. You follow what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Now, what I want to say is, had I gone there first to check it out, I would not have stayed. But because I had went there after I had packed everything up, you follow what I'm saying? And then yeah. went there, you know, I was just like, you know what, you mother, excuse me, you're lucky I'm here <laughs> and we're going to make the best of this here. You follow what I'm saying? Right, right. You know, I just gave a bad place, an incredible career. You follow what I'm saying? Everything yeah. to come here, you yeah. know? Yeah. We're going to make the best of this here. Right. Right. And, you know, God works in mysterious ways because mm -hmm. then, you know, I was already a martial artist and that's when he showed me Sensei Benny. So that inspired me and gave me a vision of where I was going to go next. That makes mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, thank you for sharing yeah. that. I yeah, appreciate for sure. That. For sure. Thank you. So going back to your, uh, your film, uh, one of the, I think it was like around the five minute mark, uh, you talked about the incident that happened when you were in California, uh -huh. uh, nineteen ninety three. Oh, the guy tried to rape me. Yeah, if you don't mind just talking about that experience, yeah. um, how like you know how you got away. I know obviously you know shrimp, um, your ability to fight. Um, yeah. But yeah, just for a woman who's experienced that, um, the you know assault, the attempt, or just being in that situation, what you know, how was that for you? First of all, let me share this with you. To this day, I still have PTSD. I have PTSD as, as a result of van experience. I didn't even know what PTSD was, but I was just going through things after that that I'd never experienced before, you know, and just, you know, constantly, you know, just, just, uh, just stuff, you know, I couldn't stay when I was in my home, just, I was going through some crazy symptoms I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And even today, when I walk down the street and I see a van, I think to myself, oh my God, please don't let a woman or girl be in there fighting mm -hmm. for a life like I was, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just something that I can't help. You, you know what I mean? And this is a very touching subject. So, you know, yeah. it just really touches me. I'm telling you, you have no idea because it was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Something I never, ever thought. It was definitely a, 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 a very good experience. Something I'll never do again. I'm ne I, I drive everywhere. Yeah. I drive, I'll drive, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want to take no ride from none of you guys, you know. I take I'll drive myself, you know. Yeah. It's just incredible, you know. I, that was a tough experience. But uh, what did I want to say? What what was your question about? What did you want to know? Um, just you know, just if you know, I'm sure mm -hmm. most women can probably relate to mm -hmm. that situation and you know, just you coming out of that you know and moving forward with your life um how did you how did you do it and and what advice would you give to a, a female survivor from sexual assault rape um or just being put in a very uncomfortable situation yeah okay so uh the only advice that i uh, the best advice that i could give is don't take a ride with strangers <laughs> that was one of the lessons that i learned because I was actually among, I had only been at that place of employment for 60 days. I didn't know any of those people. I was, I'm from Philadelphia, you know, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I didn't know any of them, but they, I knew that they were my people. You know, it was my people. So I felt comfortable going to Inglewood, learning how to play dominoes. And I did learn how to play. They, they won my whole paycheck and everything. And I even gambled my bus fare. That's how I had got stranded. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And to make a long story short, so dude offered me a ride. And I went ahead and took the ride because I was ready to go. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You know how when you're over somebody's house, you just ready to go? And I right. lost my bag on bus fare too. You know, I thought about getting in the damn cab because I saw one of them back in Philly. That's what we're back in Philly. We catch the cab and then get the heck of one out and take off run. I thought about doing that. You know, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, <clears throat> I was ready to go. So do off me a ride home. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
now forget this. And I was exhausted. So I'm like leaning. I'll never forget it. Here I am leaning on the window, like exhausted. Yeah. And I said, make a right turn here. And he made a left turn. That's when I woke up. Mm-hmm. You dig? I was like, yo, man, you going the wrong direction. I said, make a, a right and you going left. And he got real quiet. He wanted to go and grab something. You know, it got back in. Next thing I know, I found myself down at Manhattan Beach in California. You dig? Mm-hmm. And how I found out is after. I'll tell you about that. But anyway, mm-hmm. we found ourselves in this secluded area. And uh, he was like, yo, you know, let me let me stick it in. I was like, yo, man, no, <laughs> but you sticking it in. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, you know what I tried to bust out the door? Right. And there was no knob. Mm-hmm. You dig? Then when I turned back around and look at him, he had tr- totally transformed and he had his belt, Taylor Brown, on his fist. You follow what I'm saying? Mm. And he was just about to still rock me, but I turned around just in time. So I see, I figured out how he got his girls. They tried to get out, boom. As soon as they turned around, he dazed them. Boof. Oh. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So he went and tried to punch me and I blocked it. Boom. Bam, and I stole him and I ran to the back of the van real fast and shit. Tried to bust out the back of the door. There was this big chain on it and a lock. I couldn't get out. I turned around and he, seeing he, I was, I'm like 5'8", so he wasn't that tall. So let's say he was like 5'9", maybe 5'10". He was under six foot. You follow yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So we were kind of, you know, I, he wasn't, you know, he was a good opponent for me. Cause he was about my uncle's height. Okay. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. He's about the guys, my sparring partner's height. Okay. You, am I making sense? Yeah. So, you know, I kept, I kept my back up against the van, you know, I'm just keeping it real, which I kept, I kept my back up against the van. Cause I noticed as a martial artist. Yeah. You dig? And, uh, you know, he was like, you know, let me just stick it in. I'll take you home. I was like, no man, look, you let me get out. Give me the key and I'll get out. And you won't ever see me again. But Nina won't ever see me again. Y'all won't ever see me again. Dude was determined. Finally, you know, and I, listen, it wasn't even about, listen, because someone said something about there ain't no way no woman can overpower some guy. This was not about overpowering. Am I right. making sense to you? Right. In my mindset, it was about survival. Am mm. I making sense? Yeah. So as a martial artist, I kept him at his distance. Mm. Each time I struck his leg. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And Muay Thai, I struck his leg. So he only had one leg and two arms. Am I making sense? Yeah. And then that's when he came. And this and when I this is what I realized. I realized that I saw fear in his eyes mm. when I chopped his legs. You dig? Mm. I'm going, oh, bop. Let me out of here, man. Just give me the keys. And I was going around the van, you know, chopping mm-hmm. him up. You dig? Because I, mean, yeah. I was already 8-0 and 0 with, with six KOs. Right, you know right, what I'm saying? Right. I was there for that reason. Right. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And then he I, he was like, oh, shit. I got a bitch that can fight. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And that's when I saw fear in his eyes. And then that's when he came to tackle me. You follow what I'm saying? And then mm. that's when I used, you know, we call it Aikido or whatever. It was just quick thing. I grabbed his, the end of his shirt tail. They call it a hockey. Uh, one of the guys called it the hockey move. Have you ever watched hockey before? Hockey guys do that shit all the time. Okay. But what I did, I grabbed his shirt tail and pulled it over, pulled it back, tied it up, pulled it back and slammed it on the ground, went over, pulled the pants down over his shoes and I stepped on his chest and grabbed his, his genitals. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real. They cut that part. You yeah. Dig? Yeah. He screamed, he called me all kinds of bees and everything to get out the van. But I, I didn't even know that they could stretch that far up. You hear me? I had his genitals. I didn't even know that they could stretch. And I had my foot on his chest. Yeah. He was screaming for dear life. And I said, where the keys at, motherfucker? You understand? Yeah. He said, they're in my pocket. I reached in, I grabbed the keys. There's like 20,000 keys on a damn chain. You did? <laughs> There's about 20,000 of them. I wow. said, which one is the keys? He said, the orange one. I grabbed it. And I, I held on tight to his genitals. You hear me? I held on tight. And I reached over. I took the lock off. I swooped and pulled the chain off real fast. I opened the door up, kicked it up. You know what I mean? And he was screaming for dear life. He was like, get out. It's back. Get 
all me all kinds of bees. And that's when I said, when a bee says no, she means no. Okay. And I hit him, bam. But what I did tell him, I bet don't ever come after me when you're on the streets. I'm telling you, don't ever come after me. I mean it. He's like, I said, you see me on the streets, you better go the opposite direction. He was screaming like, ah! And, and what I did, I ran and I took his keys and I threw them. And this is how God works. And my yeah. clothes were halfway ripped off of me. I'm telling you, my shit was ripped off. It was crazy. But so was his shit too. You dig? So we both, yeah. I, look, I don't know how long we was fighting that van, but we was fighting. I'm telling you. <laughs> you dig? I'm telling you, we was tossing, yeah. and tossing, rolling. But the bottom wow. line, this is how God works. Because I thought about, as I shared it with my mom and my grandma, because, you know, the emergency yeah. flight, they got me home quick. I don't want to extend this here, but, you know, anyway, anyway. So, yeah, yeah that was it. I got, I got out of there. But this is what I want to share with you. So once I did get back home and be, after I caught my mother, because this, this straight, the cab driver, he picked me up and he took me straight to the pad and he didn't even charge me. Mm. You hear me? Yeah. Straight, that's how God works. He didn't even charge me. Yeah. And I was just, I was just, it's all about survival. I was just shocked. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't, believe, I couldn't believe there was a fucking chain on the thing. That was what tripped me out. Yeah. I wasn't worried about the dude because that was just a fight. I know how to fight. Right, it was right. the chain and the lock that freaked me out. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what freaked me out. And then 15 years later, it freaked me out that he was a serial killer and that he had killed over 100 women. That really freaked me out. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God. You know, and I still think about the day like, damn, mm -hmm. holy cow. Right. Holy cow. You know what yeah. I mean? Holy cow. Right, right. You That's dig? That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. You dig? Like, damn. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, that's that story on that there. Uh, it was, it's great to get the insight of that because, you know, like watching your film, I would never known it was a lock in the back. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's scary for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah, let me share this with you. So when I went back home, once I finally did make it back home and uh, I called the girl Benita and I was like, Benita, you, you, your dude tried to rape me. She's yeah. like, he's not my dude. I said, well, he tried to rape me. You know what I mean? And she got real quiet. She's like, Ooh, I heard that. Be I heard about that before. I said, well, if you heard about that before, why did you allow me to get in the car with him? I, right, said, you, right. I said, you set me up. You did. And then yeah. she started, and I said, she, I said, you set me up. I said, but don't worry about it. I kicked his ass. And she started laughing. Mm. She said, oh, he lied. He said he got jumped because we had to go and pick him up. And he said he got jumped. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was wow. the story there. Yeah, he lied. Yeah, he said he got jumped <laughs> by some guys. And it was him and I. Wow. Yeah, yeah he pride. lied to it. Yeah, it's that pride. was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so going back to your... Um, kickboxing and boxing career um and martial arts what what was one of the biggest challenges as a female boxer oh jeez man just be, existing oh my god the biggest challenge is uh just proving to the proving to them that uh you know I, I am who i am and i know who i am and i'm here to become a world champion you know and uh you know, don't judge me by the color of my skin, but by the contents of my character. So it was a lot of uh, racism that I dealt with. And it actually, out of every sport, and I've been a D1 athlete, all my mm. champion all my life. Right. It's in martial arts, and particularly when I came here to California, is all the racism that I experienced, mm. you know, um, because I was truthfully the only black, the only sister. You did yeah. Yeah. amongst all these girls, Kathy Long and, and you know, Bridget Riley and all these other top uh, uh, Valerie Hen and all these top girls, Regina Hill, all these top girls around the world. I right. was the only sister. So maybe it wasn't racism. Mm. You follow what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Yeah. You see, maybe it really wasn't. It was just right. that I was just the only sister. Right. Right. Period. Right. You right. follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So like anything else in life, it was something that I just had to experience and learn how to deal with and adapt to. Mm. That makes sense? Now, how yeah. was it? Um, I know that every fight, Taylor Brown, I had to fight for my life. Every kickboxing fight they put me in, I had to fight for my life. That's what mm. I know. You hear me? Mm. They didn't put me Definitely. in there with no weak girls. 
Right. They put me in there with the baddest girls. And you know what's cool? I said, I shot. I surprised them all. I won every time. <laughs> and I thank God, too. I did. You did? Mm, so that's yeah. what was uh, real cool about that. The transition from karate, because I went as high as I can go in karate. And this is what I was sharing with athletes who are like boxers who are looking to make the transition to mixed martial arts. Mm. You know, um, the transition is very different. Like I went as high as I could in karate. Mm. fought girls from puerto rico morocco jamaica you know what i mean new yeah. zealand i mean tough girls yeah so I, you know my confidence was boof right right i made the transition to muay thai kickboxing and they whipped me like a whipped me like i i had i was nothing every night i went home with my tail and my butt and soaked myself body in the water with some epsom saw and thought about how i was going to go back and learn master this sport called muay thai kickboxing you hear me? Mm. It was a different animal. Mm. And for many, for about six months, they beat me. You did? Mm. Yeah. And I got tired of getting whipped. Mm. And then I finally mastered that stuff. You follow yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> but each sport is different. Right. This is what I'm saying. You did? Because right. after I, I made the transition from uh, karate to your question to uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai kickboxing, then I went yeah. ahead to boxing. And with boxing, it was hard to keep my legs down. Because yeah. it was just hands only, mm. you know. Mm -hmm. I'm used to fighting with eight weapons. I'm a master using eight weapons, not okay. just two. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense, definitely. Okay. So, one thing I've noticed in the very beginning of your film as well, you said that you thank your bullies, um, you know, because they picked on you growing up because you had a very athletic body um for kids that are being bullied now or just younger kids in general in school whether sports at home etc what would you tell those kids that are just struggling with being picked on and just being bullied in general well that's a good question i would tell them to watch my story and my story is actually a blueprint it's nine minutes and 43 seconds but it's a blueprint for all children around the world true story you follow what i'm saying yeah. that's the only thing that i can tell them that is a true story go and get into some martial arts mixed martial arts so it can help you to build yourself rebuild your self-confidence you mm. dig and yeah. your self-esteem and all of you every child needs to learn and have the word self-confidence and a definition on their wall including the bullies and every child should have the definition of self-esteem on their wall, including the bullies. Am I making sense to you? Yeah. And like even that. bullies themselves should go and learn some self-defense because it will help them to be able to identify why they're so insecure about a certain thing within themselves and how come they're so gifted to attack someone else's gift, but they're not utilizing their own gift. Mm. That wow. makes sense? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that was good. That was good. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah. I can only tell you from experience. Right. You because the bullies identified. They used to tease me as a young kid because of how I'm built. Uh, mm -hmm. I was built like an athlete. I didn't even know I was built like an athlete. You right. know what I mean? We right. don't know. We're just right. trying to find our identity. Right. But they used to tease me a lot about how I was built for many years. And finally, after I knocked uh, uh, Valerie Hinton out, I get this six-figure modeling contract. And all they want is me in my bikini. You know what I mean? Mm. Put her in a bikini. Put her in a bikini. And I'm looking at myself <laughs> like, wow. You know, but in my head, I'm thinking in, in retrospect about my, my childhood experience. Yep. You dig? Yep. And I'm thinking, this is crazy. Like, the kids used to freak freaking bully me at the, and here are these people freaking out like oh she's gorgeous she's a goddess oh sure twist it around put some some, some sprinkles of sparkles on her everything lipstick everything oh my god lift her breasts up more oh my god sports here she go let her go let her go hit the walkway and i'm thinking to myself this is crazy yeah ever yeah. making sense to you yeah it's totally. contrary to what i was with her as a young child so in regards to the children who are being bullied what what i want to share with you is you have a gift we all have a gift, you hear me? Mm -hmm. And it's up to us to activate the power within in order to utilize the gift that we have been given that will take care of us throughout our journey and throughout our life. LeBron mm -hmm. James' no gift is the only one to take care of them journey throughout their lives. Ours mm -hmm. does too. That makes sense? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah. For sure. So 
it's so important for people to learn how to activate the power within. And that's what children need to do. But they need to be taught it. Mm. You dig? I was taught it because I was very fortunate to have an uncle who spent the, put his arm around my shoulder, embraced me, put his arm around my shoulder and, mm. and opened a door of a key, the key to life for me, technically. So mm. I technically, not only do I right. thank the bullies, I thank my uncle as well. You dig? Mm. Yeah. Because yeah. he saved my yeah, life. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. That's yeah, crazy. True story. You yeah. had, that's how you got your black belt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, you know, it's all it goes back to that love and that support. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, talking to your parents, letting them know what's really going on. Because if your parents don't know mm. you're being bullied, then that's going to be a problem. Because my mom didn't know mm. until one day. Taylor Brown. <laughs> I come running in the door. She was playing. Every time I come home from school, she playing on the table, playing solitary. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's one day I come running home, busting the door like a black superwoman. Bam! Yeah. All the tech, all the cars flew off. Woof. And that's when she learned that I was being bullied. Mm. Unbelievable. And I'll never forget that experience. I'll never forget that day. You know what she did? All the kids were outside. I shut the door. Put the glove curtains down and everything real fast. Put all the locks on the door. I didn't care. And my mom was like, what the hell is going on here? And by the time she opened the door, the whole school bus was in the yard. Wow. You so my mom said, what the hell is going I said, I said, Gilda going to beat me up because I didn't do her homework. <laughs> so my mom said, this is hilarious. My mom said, well, look at here. She took me outside. Yeah. I, I was holding her to holding on to my mom's leg like a damn like a damn cat. I'm trying to tell you, like yeah. tight. She said, and all y'all are not gonna beat up my daughter. Which one wants to beat her up? Which one of y'all is the baddest one? That's my mother. Hold, yeah. I'm holding on to her leg like a cat. Yeah. Tight, you know, yeah. I'll never forget her saying this. And she was like, baddest one. I really held on tight. Then oh shit. Yeah. And then Gilda came up. I'll never forget this here. And my mom said, what's your mother's name? And she said, Fanny Lou. My mom said, yeah, I know your nappy head mama. She, you know, make a long story short. She said, so you want to fight my daughter? Well, all y'all not going to jump her. She's like, sissy, this is what I want you to do. I want you to look at mom. Look at me. Look at me. I was terrified. Look at me. Pop, pop, pop. Because I couldn't hear shit. Right. The only thing I know is fear. Am I making this a true story? Fear. So any child, I want y'all to see this here because, you know, it's important. You did. All I saw was fear. I was just mm-hmm. terrified. Mm-hmm. My mom said, sissy, that's what I want you to do. I want you to take this broom and I want you to go out there. And I want you to kick her ass. Now, you got a choice. You either kick her ass, you come home and win her. You kick her ass and you come home and I'm going to kick yours. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just hilarious, man, because uh, I went out there and I guess I kicked it because I didn't get no butt whoop and I came back with half the broom, you know, a little bit of the broom. So I, I want to guess you did. Yeah. yeah. And that's when Ong came along because I was done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Nah, that's funny. That's funny. It really is. And you know, so also funny is the fact that I thought about, I was bullied a lot, thought about committing suicide, hurting myself, thought transferring from school to school to school, to school, to school, to school, and had, and was always teased about my body and all these various different things. And, and had I did something so silly as allow these, these uh, enemies or these bullies to, you know, um, win, you know what I mean? Had I yeah. allowed them to win, I would not be champion of the world, the first black woman, be getting a seven foot bronze statue, you know, having to move all these various different things. So to all you bullies, understand you got a gift. I mean, all all you people who are being bullied, you have a gift. Understand it when you're being bullied, that's often sometimes that's the bully's job is to test you. And Mm -hmm. it's up to you to find your strength, find who you out, who you are on the inside. You know, Mm -hmm. the bully is going to, uh, what they do is wake up that, that person in you, who Mm -hmm. you're supposed to be. You follow what I'm saying? Cause I, Mm -hmm. like, again, I didn't know about body types. It was making sense to you. Yeah. Yeah. So. No, totally. Definitely making sense. Yeah. Wow. 
What's up, Taylor Brown? Yeah. What's thinking, <laughs> so, uh, so my next question for you. Yeah. Um, I know we're still technically in a pandemic, but uh, what yeah. was your or what is your biggest lesson so far? You know, just being in a pandemic, especially when it, it hit in 2020. You know, time, time, you know, uh, qu- back again, it's quality time with family. You know, it's uh, because that's what, uh, you know, I'm a very family oriented person. You did. Yeah. So I had the opportunity to go back to Philadelphia, you know, and God works again. God works in such spirits, such uh, a spiritual way. You yeah. know, um, I was invited back to Pennsylvania uh, by the Sports Legend Museum in okay. Wayne, Pennsylvania okay. for about five years, five years ago. And every year they would invite me and I would, I would decline. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Well, okay. So it was one year, 2017, they invited me and I was already feeling like I was kind of homesick, like I was missing my family anyway. Yeah. So I went ahead and went back there for two years Yeah. and took my world championship belt and, and dropped it in. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a great experience. Yeah. Did I answer yeah. your question? <laughs> no, was, uh, what was your biggest lesson from the pandemic you said quality time quality time quality time yeah quality quality time during the time that i went back to pennsylvania i had an opportunity to be closer to my baby sister you dig mm. so the quality time the two years that i was there uh we i spent quality time with my baby sister because i did miss her a lot okay uh in addition to everything else and then what's crazy is december and i came back here in january of uh, last mm-hmm. year i believe and my sister passed mm-hmm. away December of last year, December oh, 2nd. Isn't that, isn't that crazy? But I'm just saying, see how, see how it works? I was already mm. feeling something pulling me back there because I was missing. Mm. But what was great mm-hmm. is I had the opportunity to, to connect with the guys to do the film that you guys saw, yeah. you know, the, yeah. the most dangerous woman, you know, and I'm happy that we connect there. And also I had the opportunity to connect with uh, Jen Fudowski, the statue lady who's doing who did my stat seven foot bronze statue okay okay so yeah it all came together for you exactly see how that's how this is how god works you know uh i remember my grandma i'm always talking about you know uh when when i was younger about uh you have to allow god to order your steps what do you mean grandma order my steps what do you mean order my steps that connection what do you mean you just have to have that connection you know you have to have Mm -hmm. that connection you know and order your steps and it's so true Mm mm-hmm that's why it's so important that we don't resist our blessings. We and when, when we do, we ask for them, mm. and when they're there, we don't recognize them because we're looking for something else. Don't resist your blessings. So be careful what you say no to. Right. You dig. Right. You know what I mean. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I'm trying. I'm trying to tell you. Listen, God sent me back to Pennsylvania two years ago to do a job. You know, mm. He ordained my steps. And I was happy to do at least 85% of the things that I wanted to do. There was also a certain thing, certain things I also wanted to do, which would involve the projects that I have going on right now. And what they did is block their own blessings. They thought they were blocking me out of envy and jealousy to stop me. And what they did, they blocked their own blessings. Mm. You see what I'm saying? That's mm. why I'm saying be careful, as my mom would say. Just be careful how you treat people because you just might be entertaining and being entertained by an angel. Mm. You do? I like that. I like that. That's what my mom used to say. Wow. Okay. All right. So we're down to our last three questions. I like this this combo. It's really good. Yeah. (laughs) Right on. I'm glad. Thank you. Taylor Brown. I like that. (laughs) (laughs) So first question, uh, what inspires you? Spiritual. I'm, I'm spiritual because life is bigger than this. There's more to it. People just think about what we're going to do here. Uh, uh, I'm just a very spiritual person. Motivating people, inspiring, you know what I mean? Yeah. Showing children that people that it can be done. It can be done. Mm-hmm. If I can go from being bullied, all these various negative, if I go from all this negativity, adversity and all this stuff and, and come out on top and get a seven foot bronze statue mm-hmm. and, and leave life with my hands raised because we all got a race to win. You can too. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. Totally. You can too. Definitely. There's no excuses. 
And don't hang with people who, who are always got excuses. Mm. As my mom used to say, get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> get rid of them. But, 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 get rid of them. They got too many excuses. Right, right. <clears throat> I like that. I like you know? that. Yeah. So what's your pet peeve? Feet. Feet. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, great. Like bad feet. <laughs> no, I like, uh, you got to have ni- nice feet. I just, I just have my pet peeves. I just really like nice feet. I just have this thing for f- nice feet. Got you. Okay. Nice feet and hands. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Cool. How about <laughs> yours? What's yours, champ? Uh, pff, I have a new one. So yeah. my pet peeve, honestly, was the pandemic that oh, yeah. <laughs> I got on my nerves. Like as far as it, uh, you know, pause everything. Everything was put, you know, put on pause. So that was yeah. like, kind of annoying. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, a shocker. This is this pandemic is something that I'll never ever forget. Right. You know. Right. Um, wow. I just never forget this. This is something that I mean. How many people passed away? Over five hundred thousand. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And my p- sister passed away from it too. Oh my gosh. So. Yeah. You know, this is what I'm saying. This is some major stuff. Yeah. You know, they got to clear the airs before they start opening things up. Mm-hmm. Before, yeah. you know, because I'm not ready to go. You ready to go? <laughs> huh? Not, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> you know, I ain't ready to go yet. No, clear that up. I mean, bad enough, everybody in the USA got to wear a mask. Right, right. You do? But right. it's be- not bad enough. It's better to be safe than sorry. Yeah. Yeah, this hopefully yeah. is a yeah. What you think? Vaccine, vaccine, huh? pretty soon, right? Yeah. So, third question: What's your guilty pleasure? How do you mean that? My guilty pleasure. So, like, mine's is I love chocolate in general, but I love chocolate milkshakes. Like, I have to have a milkshake, a smoothie, anything that's chocolate. So, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, yeah, what do they call? They're at that McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> the Oreo. What do they call the Oreos? Uh, the McFlurries. Yeah, the McFlurries. Oh, yeah. man. I don't care. I, I, I try to get down there before McDonald's closed. <laughs> <laughs> Something about the McFlurries. No, McFlurries no, are good. They are good, good, big time. Okay. What's the next one, champ? That's a good one. Those are all the last three questions. Uh, will you be Sweet. back? We do another one. Uh, yeah, anytime, anytime. In fact, um, yeah, absolutely, anytime. Um, you want awesome. me back? I'd be happy to come back. You see my cat over there chilling over there. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I took it to the groomer the other day. His name is Giannis the cat. He's totally cool. No. Fantastic, cool. Taylor Brown. I appreciate you having me. No, thank you so much for your time. Yeah, uh, this was great. And um, I definitely get this footage to you. Y'all make some, put some snippets together so you'll yeah. see it. See me. Sounds great. It. Yeah. Sound like when I appreciate peace, love, and happiness. All right. All right. And listen to this here. Make let's uh uh um uh, you in the basketball. Make sure you text me address if you're interested. I can send you a cheetah bag. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. I love right, that. Champ. All right, champ. Talk to you soon.